Greetings, I'm Jason and welcome to my comic book reviews for the books that were released on the 16th of April 2014. Uh, these, I try and keep them spoiler free as possible. Uh, just give you the general outline and story and what I liked and disliked about each book and then give it a rating out of 5 stars. Uh, this week we've got 11 books, uh, so it's going to be a long one. Uh, it breaks down as 1 from Dark Horse Comics, 5 from DC Comics, 5 from Marvel. So, without further ado, let's get into those reviews. So first up this week we have a book that was released last week, it is Captain Marvel issue number 2. Um, this was a book that I was considering dropping just because I've, you know, I was trying to cut my pull list down, not because it was a bad book. Um, but like I had the spare cash so I decided to pick it up and um, I think I did the wrong thing because I really enjoyed it so I think I'm definitely going to be picking up issue 3. Uh, the basic premise of this story is Captain Marvel is going to be the Avengers presence in space. And last issue, then this girl kind of crashed to Earth and she's comatose. So, like, they want to return her to her people, but their planet has been destroyed by the builders. So, they got to find where her people are living now. Um, so yeah, so and that's the basic premise here as Captain Marvel kind of ventures into space. And what makes the story so appealing is where last year they did the similar thing with Iron Man, but I never felt he really fit into space. Captain Marvel does. Her powers she got from alien technology, so it really works and it really, you know, she's not kind of too out of her element, but at the same time she's in a new setting, so she is kind of a fish out of water, even though she fits in really well, if that makes any kind of sense. Um so yeah, I really like what they're doing with Captain Marvel here and seeing how she kind of interacts with different people she encounters. There is a cameo this issue from the Guardians of the Galaxy, which I loved. The interaction between Rocket and Captain Marvel the Cat is just priceless. I Rocket and Groot are quickly becoming my favourite Guardians of the Galaxy. Really enjoy those. Um, there's some fantastic fight scenes here and Captain Marvel is just badass and uh, so I really like that. All in all, this was a really enjoyable story, built up to a lovely conclusion. The Guardians, they fitted into the story, even if them turning up was a bit kind of, um, what's the word, convenient, um, I think would be a nice word to use. Um, I still enjoyed the issue, and I had a lot of fun, and I'm definitely going to be picking up my number three. So I give Captain Marvel issue number two, five stars out of five. So next up, getting into this week's books now, we have The Star Wars, issue number 7. This is the book that's based off the original draft for Star Wars The New Hope by George Lucas. And I, I think saying I enjoyed the book is the wrong word. I think I'm more, I find it interesting. As somebody who's loved Star Wars all my life, you know, Star Wars is like a year younger than me. So like all my conscious life Star Wars has been there and I've just always loved Star Wars, always really enjoyed it, always been one of my favourite films. And so I was really intrigued to see what could have been and that's what this book is delivering. Um, and you can definitely see George Lucas made a lot of right decisions when he made changes to this. Uh, this book is still very much jumping from scene to scene. Um, you know, from battle to battle, we don't really get enough time for the characters to breathe. And I was kind of thinking about this, how when I remember the first time I saw A New Hope, it was on TV, and I remember I video recorded it and watched it over and over. And I can remember, you know, seeing, like, these characters for the first time, seeing people, and, like, just falling in love with the thing, like, Luke Skywalker, you had Han Solo, you had Chewbacca, C-3PO, R2-D2, Princess Leia, Darth Vader, all these characters were just so memorable and kind of gripped you. This book, so far, th so much action is going on and they're jumping from fight to fight that they're not getting enough time for the characters, for you to really get to know and to like the characters. So, you know, that's something that I think Luke has definitely changed for the better. It's really interesting seeing and the amount of stuff that gets crossed out and used in later films. Like this film, you've got this the Wookiees who are this non-technological race battling the, the Empire kind of in reminiscent of uh, Return of the Jedi. You've got a, a jail heist reminiscent of A New Hope that they leave in there, but it's a slightly different in this as, um, as Anakin is trying to uh, break out our princess. 
Um, so yeah, she, there's things that he either kept in or things he put into other films, and that's been really interesting. Um, the art, however, is really great. Uh, Mike Mahew is doing a fantastic job. Um, this is the penultimate issue, so I'm really looking forward to seeing how they're going to finish it up next. Story is beginning to break down a bit as there's just too much going on, um, and characters get introduced, but then we they just it's straight back into the action, and we don't really get to know people too much. Um, but yeah, like I say, I still find it very interesting. I think if you're a Star Wars fan, you'll love it from just the perspective of seeing what we could have had. If you're not a Star Wars fan, stay away because I don't think you'll like it at all. Uh, but I'm giving Star the Star Wars issue number seven three stars out of five. So next up, uh, we have Justice League issue number twenty nine from DC Comics. I think this book was supposed to come out last month, uh, but they de delayed it. Um, I'm really at the point now with the Forever Evil, I just want it finished. Um, I, I think DC's managing of the event has been very bad. I like the decision to keep it as a monthly. Um, I think uh, finances wise, uh, that, that was a good decision. But I think creatively, if you're going to do that, you need to make sure the book's released on time. And I don't know what's going on at DC, but you know this has been a real, you know, badly run event. Uh, this issue, however, sees Cyborg team up with the Metal Men as they try to take down the grid. Because if they take out the grid, then that will really hamper the Crime Syndicate and allow them to communicate with other people. So, you know, that's the, the, the thing, and of course you, you, it leads up to um, a sm um, cyborg against the grid as a big smackdown kind of thing going on. Um, the end is a bit predictable. Uh, there were some nice character moments in here for Cyborg, who's probably the most underutilized character until this Forever Evil that, that they've had in Justice League. Um, he's the only guy who hasn't got his own book, and, you know... So yeah, they've never done much with him until this story, and I think this was a, another really good issue if you're a fan of Cyborg. Uh, however, like I say, the ending was predictable, where it was going to go and how it was going to end up. Um, I enjoyed the Men on Men. I, I didn't think they, they really got to shine as much as they did in the last issue, uh, but they I still like the concept of they're still an interesting group. Uh, the, they, this issue has a lot of recapping what's been happening in other books of the forever evil and the whole storyline which if this had been read as it should have meant to have been last month that would have probably got on your nerves so much recapping but because it, there has been such a gap between the last issue of forever evil and this issue um, it actually works out really nice and really brings you up to speed and helps you remember stuff that's been going on um, so all in all yeah you know an enjoyable issue if not a great issue and I give Justice League issue number 29 Four stars out of five. So next up, it's back over to Marvel. I have with Hulk issue number one. Uh, this issue, we have the basic premise of the story is that Hulk, Bruce Banner has been shot. Now, usually, if Bruce Banner gets injured, he instantly reverts to the Hulk. But the people who've done this have deliberately shot him in a specific area of the brain. That once he was hit, it kind of he's not able to turn into the Hulk. So, and that sets up this whole interesting thing of like who's done this and this whole mystery that kind of carries on through the the book. Uh, the last page has a fantastic twist that just totally hooked me for next issue, and I think it could go in some really interesting directions. So I'm really uh, curious where we're going with this. Um, the art, however, I did find a bit inconsistent. I usually like Mark Bagley, but some panels seemed a bit rushed. Um, but overall, yeah, I enjoyed this book. I thought it was a good start. It set up the series well with this big mystery. And I'm really looking forward to seeing where we're going to go from here. And I give Hulk issue number one, four stars out of five. So, next up, back over to DC Comics for Batwoman issue number 30. And I don't know what it was with this issue, but it just seemed to lack something. Um, I was really excited for this after last issue, the whole setup for it, with Batwoman trying to stop Wolf Spider, and him releasing these inmates from Arkham Asylum to deal with Batwoman. And, you know, I really like that setup. Even if you want to say, oh, yeah, they were D-list villains, it still was a really nice setup. Um, and I just think he didn't live up to how they set it all up. 
Um, so I, yeah, I ended up being more than a little bit disappointed by the whole thing, um, which was a shame because I felt it had so much promise. Um, the book is very fast paced, we move through things very quickly, so nothing really has any depth. Um, the only thing that really resonated with me emotionally was the one scene with Maggie Sawyer and what goes on with her there. And out of the whole book, that was the one bit that really I, I enjoyed and I left me curious to where that's going to go. The rest of the book, it just runs through stuff so quickly, um, it just doesn't have any kind of resonance. Um, so yeah, I was a bit disappointed with this issue. I'm going to stick with it because I love the character that woman and I'm hoping because the last couple of issues I did feel I'd started to pick up again um, but this issue yeah and, and I still don't quite get the whole thing with the pictures like they put them together here and it's like instantly Batwoman and Wolf Spider are like yeah that's where we need to go and I would have liked a bit more explanation well where were we going and how do you know um, but anywho um, like I say I'm going to stick with it um, this issue you know Fast paced story, but it does seem to be lacking something. I'd give Batman, Batwoman, sorry, Batwoman, uh, issue number 30, three stars out of five. So, next up is a book I've only recently jumped onto. It is issue six of The Amazing X Men. I uh, read the first five last week, really enjoyed them, so this is one that's definitely been added to my pool list. Um, you know, Wolverine, Nightcrawler, two of my favourite X-Men characters. You know, all you need in this book is Colossus, and you've got my three favourite X-Men characters in one book, which would be awesome. Um, but, but yeah, I've been enjoying this book. This issue is kind of like the first five issues are how Nightcrawler comes back, and how he comes back to the world of the living, and the cost of that. This issue very much deals with him being back now, and Wolverine decides to throw a welcome home party, and you've got all the X-Men there. Of course, you know, you get some people turn up that necessarily you wouldn't want there, and I really like that. There were some really nice emotional moments here. Um, of course, as you can see from the cover, the one character that turns up is Nightcrawler's old Ma, uh, Mystique. And she's more looking for Azrael rather than Nightcrawler. So that leads to some nice moments. Um, the art in this book wasn't my cup of tea. I can't say the art was bad. It just wasn't to my taste. So I didn't enjoy the art. But the story made up for that. Because I just really enjoyed the story in the end. Even though you get some dark stuff happening throughout the story. The end still put a smile on my face. And I'm really enjoying this book. I'm so pleased that I jumped onto it. And I would give Amazing X-Men issue number 6. 4 stars out of 5. So next up we have Batman and Wonder Woman issue number 30 from DC Comics and this continues the hunt for Robin that started last issue and Ra's al Ghul has, has stolen the body of Batman's son and Ra's al Ghul's grandson uh, Damien and he's planning on raising Damien along with his daughter from the dead using the Lazarus Pit. Uh, Batman stopped him last time out now he's located one on Paradise Island and so Batman has to get there to try and stop Ra's al Ghul. Wonder Woman's going to help him. But the Amazons don't want Batman on the island because he's a man. And no men are allowed on Paradise Island. Um, I really enjoyed this story. It's really interesting to see Batman in an environment other than Gotham. Um, so I really like that. Seeing him interact with places and people in a different part of the DC Universe. Um, I, I really liked... Um, the interaction between Wonder Woman and the Amazons, I thought that was really good. And Wonder Woman really fits into the story here. It isn't kind of like last issue with Aquaman, he felt kind of tacked in, very convenient that he'd be there. This issue, Wonder Woman really fits in really well with what we, we'd been part of the story. Um, there's some nice twists to the tale, especially with, with the monster at the end I, that I really liked. That wasn't what I was expecting. Um, my only gripe with the issue would be the art. Um, while I love Gleason's art for the majority of the book, I didn't quite like how he drew Wonder Woman. And it's more a face than a body. I just, it didn't, for me, it just didn't resonate Wonder Woman. Um, but every artist is going to con con you know, interpret things differently. Um, overall, this was a fun issue, and I would give Batman and Wonder Woman 4 stars out of 5. Next we jump back over to Marvel for Winter Soldier, 
the bitter march issue number three out of five uh, this has been a really great mini series thus far and this just can keeps that run going um, last time out our uh, shield agent Ren Shin um, had got these two Nazi scientists away from Hydra and they were on a train to West Berlin to try and get out of this country that is very um, Hydra friendly so that that he can get help to get so that Hydra don't get their hands on these two scientists who've got this formula the alchemy formula that can enable them to make any kind of metal they want um, on the train however you've got Winner Soldier who's trying to get these two Nazi scientists for the Soviet Union and you've also got the agents of Hydra who want to reclaim them um, last issue it all blew up we'd, we'd win a soldier back in Renshin and then the Hydra agents showed up so we continued that as people are there, they're trying to survive and make it off the train we get some really really awesome and brutal fight scenes uh, between the different characters and that was really good and that was really fun um, yet the book still keeps this kind of old vibe like, like a, a Sean Connery James Bond film it still has that calm vibe because it's set in the 60s and that was really good um, some characters get their common bits this issue which that was also really good um, and there's a nice new little wrinkle with Winner Soldier and I don't know if this has always been there with his weakness to something um, I don't know but that that did add a little nice little twist to it all um, overall I'm just really loving this and the cliffhanger at the end just made sure that I'm gonna definitely be back for issue number four uh, if you've been enjoying Recommenders uh, Captain America run you'll enjoy this because the villain in that book, uh, Iron, the Iron Nail, he was a former S.H.I.E.L.D. agent. And he's the S.H.I.E.L.D. agent in this book. So if you're enjoying Captain America by Rick Remender, this is definitely a book you want to pick up. Um, all in all, I'm just loving this series at the moment. And I give Winner Soldier the bit of March. Five stars out of five. Sticking with Marvel, we next up we have four God of Thunder issue number 21, and this book is back to its best. Uh, this Last Days of Midgard story arc has been brilliant, and you know, it shows how important a creative team are, because he said Ribic's pencils just give a totally different kind of vibe to this book. And couple of that with Jason Aaron's writing, and it feels like you're reading this old time kind of classic saga kind of tale from mythology, rather than like... A modern day comic and and that's down to the team you know that, that what they create on that page together um, and it definitely shows the importance both make into creating a book um, that I love that the future we've got King Four and he's battling uh, got old Galactus who's trying to consume what's left of the earth so they have a big ba massive battle which is awesome um, and he said ribbed pencils just to capture that awesomeness in all its glory modern day force fighting a slightly different battle with the boss of Roxxon and um, that boss is a real sleaze and I'm really looking forward to him getting his comments but at the moment he's got four down and it's really going to be interesting to see how four counters this because this is a problem he can't just swing his hammer at um, so yeah I'm really really enjoying this book at the moment if I had to pick a pick of the week, it would be for God of Thunder issue number 21. Um, it was a fantastic book and a fantastic week. Um, I give for God of Thunder, no surprises, I give it 5 stars out of 5. So next up from DC, uh, issue number 2 of their weekly series, Batman Eternal. Um, and I really enjoyed this book once again, two weeks in a row and I've enjoyed both issues. Very different from the last issue, where last issue really focused on the Gotham the Police Department. This one doesn't so much. Um, the structure of the story is this mystery of, well, who's behind what happened to Commissioner Gordon and, and who's behind all this. And the whole structure of the issue is like different people kind of coming to the realisation. And then at the end we get the reveal of who this person is. Um, I do think that there's something bigger going on here. Um, as, as what from what we see in Arkham Asylum, but even so, um, it was a great structural way the book was put together. I, I just really enjoyed it, um, and it's also already two issues in. It has an epic feel because we've seen the Gotham Police Department. This issue we kind of get uh, appearances from other Gotham-based characters, and it already it feels epic because it's taking everything in into the one book, um, and it's not just like Batman Eternal. You could almost have called it Gotham Eternal. 
because it's about all the characters that are in Gotham and how this this story is going to affect all of them. So yeah, two issues in, I'm really loving it. Um, I had to make the difficult decision to drop one of my Batman books and I dropped the Snyder book so I could keep picking up uh, Batman Eternal. Um, and I'm kind of glad I did because this book has just been really good so far and I give Batman Eternal issue number two five stars out of five. So next up we have the final issue of the Superior Spider-Man and this is issue of course issue 31 um, where we finish off this before it relaunches in two weeks as the Amazing Spider-Man. Um, this book was, you know, first things first, let's get my moaning out of the way first. Um, while I understand why they did it, there was a Silver Surfer backup in this book. Really good story, art by Mike Aldred, written by Dan Slott. Totally understand, this is going to be one of the highest selling books of the month. I can totally understand why they'd want to have Silver Surfer as a backup in there to try and entice people to buy Silver Surfer. Totally get it. But I didn't want it. I don't I wasn't happy that it was here because I'm paying five ninety nine for a book, which I'm not gonna get into the price because I bought it, you know. If I've got a real problem with the price, I shouldn't have bought it. But by buying it I'm part of the problem because while we keep buying the books, they're gonna keep putting them up to silly prices because they don't really keep buying them. So I'm not complaining about the price as such but just the content for the price I would much rather they cut that Silver Surfer story out and and charge us a bit less for the book um, whether they would or not I don't know uh, but I would have preferred that because while the story was good I didn't really need to see a Silver Surfer story here and I was a bit angry they charge you that extra and then they put stuff in there that isn't needed the rest of the book though um, I can't complain about they did they did have another backup but it was dealing with the fallout from the main story so I liked the rest of the content of the book um, I felt this story of the Goblin Nation I found it peaked a last issue in saying that out though this was a really enjoyable issue and it rounds things off lovely um, it closes some things and it plants seeds for future stories with other things and I think that was really well done by Dan Slott the art by Giuseppe Comancali I really liked the backup is written by Christos Gage with art I think is it Will Shinley who does the art on that and I, I enjoyed that backup as well and, and like again there's some interesting things being set up for Spider-Man's future so I, and all in all I, I, I enjoyed this experience I found it a positive conclusion if you've been following this for 31 issues it was it satisfied me because I felt this concluded the story while at the same time leaving some kind of things going on I, I loved this the identity of the Green Goblin I thought that was really clever and again that set something up really interesting for the future um, so all in all I enjoyed this you know despite a couple of bit of grabs where I feel it did peak last issue um, the Avengers I thought were very inconsistently written how they react to Spider-Man this issue compared to the last issue uh, but all in all I, I enjoyed it and I would give Superior Spider-Man issue number 31 4 stars out of 5 So the final book to be reviewed this week is Wonder Woman issue number 30 and this was just another spectacular issue from this creative team. Um, the story goes in a total opposite way than I was expecting. I thought we were going to get this big battle with them going up against the Firstborn now that Wonder Woman had the Amazons back. But they go in a completely opposite direction giving you this conflict between Wonder Woman and the Amazons and why would the Amazons follow Wonder Woman into battle. So I really liked that conflict and I liked the direction that the book took. I thought that was really good. Um, the firstborn here in this issue is really evil and sadistic. And I love what they've done because like, I was feeling sorry for the firstborn. When he was getting tortured by Apollo, I was really feeling sorry for the dude. And then when we got the eventual, his release and he got to fight Apollo, I was like, yeah, go on firstborn. And now he's just such an evil, sadistic son of a... Ooh, yeah, he... Yeah, Firstborn, I'm really looking forward to Wonder Woman whooping his ass because they've really set him up strong as a villain in this issue. Um, all in all, this book just continues to be awesome. Um, if you're not weeding it, I don't know why not. Don't don't be put off that it's Wonder Woman. You know, because I know in the past, I've never been a big fan of the Wonder Woman character. But this book has turned me into a fan because I just lo totally love how it's written. Um, you really need to read it from issue one. I don't think this issue would have the same kind of impact if you hadn't been reading the preceding issues. 
Um, but it's definitely well worth investing in the trade and catching up on the story because this has just been a fantastic run and I'm really loving it. And I give Wonder Woman issue number 30 five stars out of five. Well, you've reached the end of my video. Thank you very much for sticking with me this long. Sorry about the length of this video, um, but like my philosophy with my videos is that what's the point of making them if I don't get to say all the things I want to say about the books? So unfortunately, that means sometimes they're going to be longer than I would like because um, I do try and keep them as short as possible. Um, and when you've got this many books like I had this week to review, it, it does make it even more difficult to have a short video. Um, hopefully next week I'll have a whole, a whole video up um, it's been unavoidable the last couple of weeks I've not been able to do one I'm still going to be doing them uh, but like there's still a lot of stuff has been going on so I haven't been able to do them um, like I say I hope I'll get one done this week the books here in the UK are coming out a day later because of the double bank holiday so it won't be up until Thursday but hopefully Thursday night there'll be a whole video up and then I'll have my review video up next Sunday. One thing you won't no longer see in my haul video is 2000 AD. I've not dropped it. I've just decided to pick it up via subscription. Which, um, since I've jumped on board 2000 AD, I've really enjoyed it. So I, I, I decided to take the plunge with a subscription. I'd have liked to have set up the year one. But unfortunately, this side of payday didn't have enough funds. So... I set up the monthly one. I don't know if it's automatically reoccurring. They never said. Um, but the service obviously so far has been really good because I set up the subscription either the Thursday or the Friday, and I got my first issues on Monday. So you know, and the books didn't come out till the Wednesday. So you know, yeah. See, that was really good. So um, I'm so, so you won't see that anymore in my whole video. Um, last bit of business is my subscribers. I'm almost up to 200 subscribers. I think last time I checked, it was 197. So there's three subscribers away. Um, I never ever thought I I would get that many subscribers in my life. Um, I started this and I still do this because I enjoy it. It's fun and it's great fun to in, to to be able to say my opinions and to interact with people is great fun. Um, I've never done this to become popular so the fact that I've got 200 subscribers you know that I've not really gone out and aggressively like some people do and I'm not you know everybody whatever floats your boat but some people are very aggressive at chasing getting subscribers and they'll do things to make their videos get extra subscribers and extra likes and stuff and I've never kind of played those games I've done this because I enjoy doing it um, and whether people watch it or not I'm going to keep doing it and you know thankfully now I have like a you know fairly decent viewership that I consider a decent viewership um, and so like the fact that I got 200 subscribers just putting out my videos um, I it's just really um, speechless you know I, I just never thought I would get this many so to be free away from 200 is just awesome uh, so a big thank you to everybody who subscribed to my channel and who watches my videos who comments on my videos, who gives me thumbs up. Everybody, I just appreciate you more than words can express. So, thank you. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much it for this week. Uh, like I say, thank you for sticking with me this long. Um, I've been Jason. This has been my comic book reviews. Bye for now.